There are a ton of different ways to add protein to seitan, tofu, beans, chickpea flour, but mushrooms might just be king. So today we'll add mushrooms in the seitan to create one of the juiciest, umamiest, melt in your mouth vegan briskets that will rock any barbecue. This is just the beginning of tapping the potential of this pairing, so join me while we try to answer the age old question, is there anything mushrooms can't do? To get started, let's talk about the baby bella of the ball here, the shrooms. So to a blender, add 230 grams or eight ounces of the shrooms, one and one fourth cup or 280 grams veggie stock. I'm using bouillon as a shortcut here, one fourth cup or 65 grams of soy sauce, a fourth cup of marsala cooking wine, a tablespoon of liquid smoke, two tablespoons mushroom powder, I'll leave a link in the description of the kind I use, two teaspoons onion powder, a little tip for those who make a lot of seitan, I like to buy a big tub of this as I constantly go through those expensive tiny bottles, and then one teaspoon each of garlic, cumin, and MSG. So while this is blending, let's chat salt. So the mushroom powder, soy sauce, and the bouillon all have a ton of sodium in it, and that's going to season the seitan for us. So you don't need to add any salt here unless you're using low to no sodium stock. In that case, you might want to add a little extra. Oop, looks like we're done over here. After about 30 seconds, you'll have a beautiful brown umami bomb mushroom smoothie. Now this is a no chunk zone. There should be nothing chunking it up in here. Grab yourself a mixing bowl of 330 grams or two and three fourths cup of vital wheat gluten and pour in your pitcher of liquid flavor right on top. Use your hands to swish it around and once the flour is mostly incorporated, start massaging by grabbing handfuls, sweeping bits of the dough around to get the dry gluten hanging around the wall. Now this is one of the wettest doughs I've worked with, and that is what we need to get the juicy, flavorful, craveable texture that we desire. Continue the kneading process, stretch, fold, turn, press, and after starting off incredibly pliable, it will start to form small gluten strands. Keep at it, and when you can gently stretch it, pick it up without it immediately falling apart, you're in biznass. When the dough is ready, it'll still tear, but it should have some resistance to doing so, and you'll see nice, healthy gluten strands forming. Here's a before and after. Well, the before is just the dough falling apart, Part, but I think you get the point. Now shape it into a nine by six inch ish loaf, about an inch tall or smaller, depending on how much room you have. <laughs> Since we're imitating a brisket, I'm going to shape mine a little smaller at one end, like a guitar pick. Now let that hang out while we generously grease the bottom of a high walled pan, which we'll use later to simmer the same roast. At this point, you can let the dough rest for up to 24 hours before moving on to the next step. If anything, the more rest, the better, but you can also just jump right into the cook, which we'll do now. Launch your dough off on his cooking journey into a 350F oven for 45 minutes. During the quote dry bake, the gluten will start to set from the heat, allowing it to keep its shape for the wet phase of the cook. While that's baking, get about two quarts of stock boiling on the range. And again, I'm a lazy boy, so I'm using the stock shortcut again. After the dry bake, it will have changed to a bit darker color, but still be soft. Even though I greased the pan, the roast still stuck to the bottom, so I tried loosening it with a spatula. That didn't quite work either, so I added some of the stock, and boy, did that do the trick. In the future, I'll likely put some parchment paper underneath, and you probably should too. Now let's add the the rest of the near boiling stock to the pan, make sure the stock is at least 200 F. If the stock is below that, it will not cook the roast, but instead use the oven energy to just get the liquid hotter. Carefully without sloshing on yourself, place him back in the oven. Take it out about halfway through, carefully flip. It's still uncooked, so you could rip him in half if you go too hard in the paint. You'll have some water loss from steam, so boil extra water in a pot and add that if needed. The roast should always be floating on a sea of almost boiling flavor. Pop them back in the oven and continue on the same heat for a final hour. After the wet bake, your roast should be around 180 F in the thickest part. If it isn't, you can finish with a 30 minute simmer on the stove. Now we're going to broil this and I wasn't confident about the pot's ability to withstand the heat from the broil, so I transferred it to a baking sheet. If you prefer a firmer roast, let this sit in the fridge overnight if you like. If not, let's finish this sucker up. You'll notice that the brisket firmed up. We've come a long way since that wet dough haven't we? Remember those days? It just seems like a few minutes ago in this video we were young and wondering if this all would come together. Now don't throw away this stock you cooked it in. This is liquid gold. Remember those mushrooms and seasonings we use? Those are all now flavoring this liquid. Strain, save, and use as a juice? Nope, J-U-S, not that. It can even go as a good replacement for the stock in my vegan beef stew video, which I'll link to in the description. Now based with the healthy amount of barbecue sauce, 
and broil for 10 minutes. Take it out and baste again so we get two layers of flavor. We're gonna do this until it has a deep dark red brown sheen. I don't own a grill or a smoker, but this would be even better on those probably. Please someone try that out and let me know. Cut it up and serve with some pickles, raw onion, maybe even a slice of bread, Texas barbecue style. Now let's taste. The final product is a delicate melt in your mouth texture that is bursting with flavor. I think this is one of the most flavorful seitans I've ever made, and this recipe makes a ton. This would go great in soups, chopped up on sandwiches, on tacos, the world is your brisket. I'll be experimenting with blending mushrooms in my vegan meat from now on, and if you do too, let me know how it goes. I think this is the beginning of some serious mushroom magic. If you like this, you'd probably like to check out my beef stew video that just popped up on your screen. This recipe would work great with leftovers. And until next time, y'all, be nice to each other and keep cooking.